Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to your Daily Penguin, our tour through my Penguin Classic wall, book by book, author by author. Today's will be fairly brief. It is, believe it or not, in a way, yet another travel adventure volume. <laughs> I, I don't think I ever grouped these consciously. I think they just showed up that way. This is Nellie Bly, a great Penguin volume collecting a whole bunch of the writings of the turn of the 20th century journalist Nellie Bly who, uh, as the, the editor here, um, this is edited uh, by Jean-Marie Lutz, L-U-T-E-S. And if I remember correctly, she makes the point in her introduction that at a time when, when women were the dancing dogs of the journalism world, they did flower shows and recipe columns and that sort of thing. And often, very often, wrote anonymously. At, at that same time, Nellie Bly virtually never wrote a national piece of journalism didn't have her byline on it. And uh, she made, uh, she did stunt journalism uh, and made her name doing that, got herself committed to an insane asylum. Or in the title, in the title piece here, decided to beat Phileas Fogg of Jules Verne's novel by traveling around the world in 72 days. Uh, she shaved a week off his, off his 80 day total. Uh, and a whole bunch of other things too. Uh, went to a, a notoriously corrupt employment agency, just theatrically desperate for a job, just to see what they would do, see what kind of effort, what kind of uh, ex extent they would go to. Did some war correspondent, did some foreign correspondent, did some travel correspondent. That's probably why this is connected with those others. I can't imagine that I had the sight, the foresight to put Nellie Bly with them. But how wonderful to have a collection of her work. And boy, oh boy, when it comes to the turn of the 20th century, that time period, I can think of, off the top of my head, six or seven uh, women writers, not, not necessarily all of stunt journalism, but of a lot of other different kinds of things that deserve a collection just like this. It's wonderful to have Nellie Bly. She's by far probably the most famous of them. She, certainly she's had the, the highest number of colorful kids' book adventure stories written about her because she had a big adventurous life. And... Uh, Journalism was her favorite way. That kind of journalism was her favorite way of expressing that life. Uh, she left the craft of journalism often. She had she would go away and take a breather, as she put it, from time to time, including some very long breathers where she attended to, uh, again, what she referred to as real life. <laughs> but she always came back, and she wrote for her whole life. And this collection car spans that whole life and has not only the famous pieces, but a lot of the other stuff and with great introductions and context settings essays. So your penguin for today is not long, but it is a recommend. It, knowing the story of Nellie Bly, realizing how many people, and not just women, in the middle part of the 20th century owe their professions to her is invaluable anyway. But the, the, the heart and soul of the matter, the, the much better part is that uh, she's great to read, even now. She hasn't, she hasn't rusted at all. So, so it's fantastic to have this volume. It's fantastic to include it. I'm, I'm uh, stressing nonfiction for Nonfiction November here on BookTube, uh, an event started by Olive and, and carried on with a bunch of other great BookTube hosts where they stress the value of reading your nonfiction, pulling it down off the shelf, stop ignoring it in favor of cheesy literary fiction about upper middle class Connecticut divorce or the Nigerian immigrant experience. Uh, and this is a perfect example of that, uh, because although Nellie Bly loved to write dramatically, and although she, she intentionally put herself in the way of many, many dramatic stories, she never lied. She didn't do what a lot, what a lot of stunt journalists do today, where they just make stuff up and get caught at it over and over and over again. They get exposed at it over and over again, so that even in late 2020, the Atlantic has to has to print an enormous retraction, an enormous apology to its readers because they published a story by uh, a woman stunt journalist who just plain made stuff up. Nellie Bly never did that, uh, and would have been the foremost critic of people like that, or or the the all the male versions of that 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 decided that they would juice up their stories by lying, by inventing stuff. Uh, Nellie Bly did write fiction from time to time the less said about it the better but but her non-fiction is scrupulous and fantastic so great that there's a volume like this i again I, i've said this 
four or five days in a row, however many days it's been now, but I can't believe, I find it hard to believe that our next volume will have anything to do with travel in any way. I, I find that very hard to believe. Sooner or later, we've got to break out of this. But we're going to continue in November to do nonfiction for your Daily Penguin. Uh, so whatever it is, it'll be that. So I'll, I'll wrap this up fairly quick, and uh, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.